then, now the headlines again. Interpreting for the Neds tonight, Rab McGlinchey. How are you doing? At Presswick Airport today, Her Majesty the Queen warmly welcomed visiting Chief Batalatu to these shores. Aye, this guy's got a jet and everything, by the way. This guy is double minted, right? Batalatu. He must have been battering into something, because see, when he got half a plane, he was out his tits, so he was. Don't even know the difference between the Queen and the Pope, man. The Copyright Control Board today announced a major crackdown on individuals selling illegal pirate videos to the public. I don't know anything about pirate videos, so I couldn't possibly comment on that. <laughs> Look at me, man. I'm taking a pure beam on my button, man. I don't know nothing. Why? And finally, a bank in the centre of Aberdeen today was held up and an undisclosed sum was stolen. Police announced they'd hoped to have suspects rounded up by the weekend. Undisclosed sum, man. That's a lot of cake for a start, right, by the way, because they know exactly how much it is. What happened, right? Five bears in a bite of van. They bring you into the bank, right? Tank all the money. Half a mile, my mates told me, and all that. Police don't know who they are, man. Fannies. Good night. <laughs> I don't know, I just, the karate stuff, I see people doing that when they come onto TV. Yeah, but it's not for us, is it? No, it's not for us. Hi there, I'm Ford Kiernan. And I'm Greg Hempel. Welcome to Tune the Fat, right here on the telly. In our living room. Mm -hmm. I've got to tell you, Ford, I'm feeling a cocktail, a devilish cocktail of excitement and fear. How so? Well, you know, I'm just not sure when we should sort of start firing in with it. It's always that way when you introduce yourself. When uh -huh. do you fire in with the gags, the funnies, the lines, the smiles? Greg. Let me put your mind at rest. We don't have to write these sections, right? right. This is us at home being spontaneous and mm. all the rest of it, because that's the kind of guys we are. We're spontaneous, aren't we? Oh, yeah, yeah, we can come up with the, the, the funny. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Gotta keep the vibe. Well, how are we gonna do that? Well, I've been listening to some radio. Mm -hmm. and what they tend to do on radio is, you know, what they'll always do is uh, they'll talk about things that you can't get anymore. Retro things? Yeah, people love that stuff. Yeah, like you that know? telly and all that. Yeah, absolutely. People go crazy for that kind of thing. Sweets, sweets of yesteryear. Yeah. You know, like uh, uh, Pacers. Oh, our spangles. Yeah, yeah, and games too. You I know? can hear them laughing already. Think, Kerplunk. Oh, Kerplunk. Oh, a twister. That's all we got to do is talk about that stuff. That yeah, we're for. yeah, yeah. Well, it's telly, right? Uh huh. We've got a, a visual prop. That's what we need. Buckaroo. I've got it through there. Buckaroo. Everybody remembers Buckaroo. We could set it up and, you know. Oh, for the next time that we come back in chat, we could have the Buckaroo there. Like the little... Hanging the wee things on everybody going, oh, yeah. I remember I used to do that. Like oh, that's a nightmare. Horse man. kicking and yeah. everything. Right, we've I'm got... going to go and get it. We've got it. Yeah, we got it. Fantastic. Oh, listen. Yeah. Remember, spontaneity. Just keep the, keep the, the party warm. Keep the, keep the Safe hands. Just yeah. keep it safe what? hands. Okay, okay. I uh, can't, I can't, I can't find the buckaroo. It's in the cupboard. I, I know, but I, I'm cupboard. in the cupboard. I'm in the cupboard, but I can't find it. I'll come and help. <laughs> Who's next? Oh, here he comes. Is the guy Scottish? <clears throat> I think so, yeah. Hi, your name is? Eh, uh, Ronald Villiers. OK, and you're with? I'm just, I'm just here myself. Well, what agency are you oh, with? Oh, right, eh, uh, where they come and pump. OK, uh, this is Rick. Hello there, Rick. How are, how are you? Um, Rick produced Next Generation, oh. uh, Deep Space Nine, right. and uh, Voyager. Oh, that's lovely. That must keep you right busy and all that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's very, very busy. OK, um, we're casting in Scotland for the new Star Trek film. Right. And uh, basically the part you'll be reading for is Communications Officer Scanlan. Yeah, right. Um, we want to try and keep the spirit of the original movie. Oh, aye. So the, the fans are screaming out for a Scottish character. Aye, like Scotty or something like that. Yes, like Scotty. And a loads of physics captain. That's right. And oh, the dilithium crystals and that. All that. Uh -huh. um, I'll just set the scene for you then. Captain Picard is right, well, sitting. Captain Picard, I like him. He's that distinguished, isn't he? With his big baldy head and all that. <laughs> Make it so. Okay. The, the bit we want you to do right. is. Earl um... Grey hot. That's a, I don't like it myself. It's a nice wee touch set enough. My man, he drinks it. It tastes like pot puri. I mean, I don't know. Really. Just, just listen to OK. So the situation is the uh, the Borg has appeared off the starboard bow. Right. And Picard asks you for a status report. Right. So oh, Rick will read in Picard's lines. Right. Officer Scanlan, status report. All right, me. Hey, as the Borg went, a word with you, Captain. 
Um, it's OK. Uh, we don't have a script for this, Ronald, so um, basically, because it's been kept under wraps, ah, so we want secret. you to just... Uh, so we want you to just uh, improvise. Hey, Say something what? like, for instance, um, the Borg are Borg hailing us... hailing us. Hailing us on all, all frequencies. All frequencies, Captain That's Picard. Right. Yeah, something Officer like Scanlon, that. Officer Scanlon, status report. That's the Borg on the phone for you, Captain Picard. <laughs> OK, you hold it there. Deep space, um, no phones. The 24th oh, century. That's right, there's no any You never see them on the phone. <laughs> right. Officer Scanlon, status report. That's the Borg on the big screen for you, Captain. <laughs> they, they never phoned or nothing. They just appeared <laughs> a word. A, a word it? Just close the door on your way out. Mm -hmm. Well, live a long time and prosper then. <laughs> Engage. <laughs> I can date you, Baka. Oh! <laughs> Who is he with? Where'd he come in, pump? Make a note of that. Uh, right, William, this is Stephen. It's his first day here at the school. And it's your job to show him about the classroom. Make sure he gets to know everybody, OK? Yes, miss. Right. Right. Wank. Wank. Good guy. <laughs> Wank. Good guy. Good guy. Wank. Wank. Good guy. Wank. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, a table for one, please. <laughs> I nearly didn't recognise you there. Billy Conley. Aye, the very same, aye. Here, wait. Get your wee tail by the window, eh? Let's shift this couple here. No, listen here, you don't have to do that. Don't do that. Shut it! I'll not hear about it, all right? Come on, you two. Up and get a man a seat. Come on! Up, up, come on! Get up! Shift it there! I'm really very sorry about that. I'm sorry. Do you know who this is? It's the big unit. It's BC. It's Billy Conley. The hell are you two got in that? Eh, he's doing now. Get a man a bit of privacy there. Menu for Mr. Conley, please! No, listen, I don't need one. I'm, I'm only wanting a plate of soup, all right? It's the wee plate of soup, eh? Just a wee plate of soup, like your ma used to make down Anderson way. <laughs> aye, whatever, aye. You want a drink? No, I'll just have a cup of coffee, thanks. Come on, take a drink. Drink in the house for Billy, eh? The big one, eh? Calibre. Aye. <laughs> That's the one you did the adverts for, eh? <laughs> but Castlemaine. Find the Castlemaine and draft through there. Aye, man. We paint a castle in for a man with a big castle, eh? <laughs> Just a coffee. You'd up the drink, didn't you? Any drink, any mare. Clean living, big yin. Doesn't he touch a drop? <laughs> He's your booze partner, Billy. Not a new, eh? Come on. Say Joby, eh? Go and see Joby, Billy. Look, turn it in, eh? Come on, say Joby, Joby, Joby! <laughs> say brilliant, big yin. Say brilliant, Joby! <laughs> Look, wait a minute here. Ricky! I will and take your break. <sighs> yeah, I'm just shooting the breeze with a big man. I'll not tell you again, Ricky. On you go, break time. Go on. Awfully oh, sorry about that, Mr. Connolly. I'll not be bothering you again. Ah, that's all right. No There's bother. Your suit there. Yeah, that's great. Thanks okay. a lot. Sir. And I'll take that jacket. All right. Right. Okay. okay. There you are. Thank you. What's oh, soaking? Oh, here. Ah, well, it's pelting it there, you know. Well, should I wear your wellies, eh? Because <laughs> if it was not for your wellies, <laughs> where would you be? <laughs> You'd be in the hospital. <laughs> Oh, Good guy. <laughs> Wank. <laughs> it's time to head down to the Moss Park Bowling Club, where it's not just jacks and bowls flying this week, the sparks are too. In this week's episode of Bowls. Wednesday morning, and it's a perfect day but a storm cloud is hanging over the clubhouse. Treasurer, Margaret Beatty, is on the warpath. Here, Sammy. You've not even finished the toilets yet. Somebody could slip in there, that's all. We need a bloody claim. Come on. <sighs> I'm awfully uptight today. See, for any bowling club to operate, everybody knows it needs proper funding. And that means getting your money off your members in time. You take Danny Watson, for instance. Twelve years he's been a member of this bowling club, and every bloody year he comes up with some excuse not to pay his dues. Well, this year's been no different, so he was geared to this morning to pay them. He still hasn't paid them, so I have to suspend them. He's just chancing his arm, cos he's a popular fella. And he's in the semis. With Danny Watson in the semi-final of the regional playoffs, 
the club hold an emergency general meeting to vote on his expulsion. Danny paces nervously in the corridor of the clubhouse. Yet the bowler remains in good spirits. Oh, I'm in good spirits. I, I, I had a big electric bill there, you know, that, that held me back for paying my dues and whatnot. But can he bag me, but, you know, I'm, I'm well liked. I get, I get on with everybody, you know. It's, besides, you know, I'm in the semis. <laughs> Give him the bullet. Aye, putting his ears. Bampot was me a ten spot. Sin die him. Right. He's an asshole. Right, really. <laughs> hey, unanimous. He's humped. Go and bring him in. You see his face. Good people. Are. Come in, Danny. Oh, there you are, Mags. Mm. Where are you, darling? All right. Hey, Sam. <laughs> unanimous, that's what happened. <laughs> unanimous, they <laughs> bagged me. You believe that? Friends of mine. Peter Kitchen's in there. 30 years I've known that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the day of the semi final. Pete McCutcheon, a defeated quarter finalist, is brought in to replace Danny. Well, I, I don't feel awkward, you know, because uh, I call Danny and I are good pals, you know. It's unfortunate, but uh, I can't say what it is, you know. I hope he's happy for me. Oh, uh... What do you? Wait. It's late in the game. Things are not going well for Moss Park Bowling Club and Pete is losing badly. Suddenly, outside the grounds, drama unfolds. Away you go, you steady! <laughs> Pete McCutcheon's a backstabbing bastard! The kidney ball for Taffy! Mr Watson, please, we'll find the police! You've taken away my one pleasure in life, you asshole! You said, oh, <laughs> asshole! I'm Jane and Finiston! It's ten pound cheaper! <laughs> I'll see you in the semi-final next year, McCutcheon, you back! <laughs> Next week, Pete gets a new set of bowls. Is that right? Margaret becomes a grandmother That's for great. the fourth time. I'm that proud. And the clubhouse mysteriously goes on fire. <laughs> Hello, I'm here to audition for Crime Watch. <laughs> I'm a bit embarrassed. What about? Oh, you know, in that first section, we said we were spontaneous and witty and all that, off the cuff, and then I'm left sitting there like that. I know, came out and did all that karate stuff. We talked the talk, we didn't walk the walk. I had a whitey. Ah, it's bad news, isn't it? Do you think the audience have already tippled? What, rumbled that we're not comedians or comics? Yeah, 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 we've been found out, haven't we? Well, how long can you go before you get fun out, is the question. Yeah, I hope, I hope they don't find out until about show five or show six or something. Yeah. You know? Do you think that, uh, how long could you get away with being a footballer, for example? Oh, two minutes. Pretending to be a footballer? Two minutes. Yeah? Yeah, I'd be there in the strip, I'd be running out there in front of the stadium and all the rest of it, and all the people would just go, hey, you, fat boy, no, you can't do it. Off. I think you can extend that period of fraudulent behaviour uh -huh. by, you know, when the ball gets passed to you, just trap it, doesn't involve a lot of movement, and pass it on, and you get a round from the 50,000. So you think you can get longer than two minutes? I think maybe four or five before they tipple. Mm. Concert pianist. Ooh, uh, no, see, that's a tough one for you, because either you can play mm -hmm. or you can't. No, you see, I think there's a thing you can do, right, to get away with that. Mm. Right, you go out there, you're in the tuck, swallow the tail coat the whole bit. Lights go down. Lights go down, everybody, ooh, like that. Brrrr. With the thumbs. You know that uh, thing they do? Yeah, yeah, and then back up yeah. the way, Brrrr. So that's you bought some time. Yeah. And you can do that jazz thing with the one note. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, that's good. So you can buy some time, right? Six or seven minutes. Uh -huh. Or you could extend that period once again by coming out and sitting down with your tucks and tails and you go like that just about to play. Because you can't play because you'll be rumbled as soon as you do. Uh -huh. Then you turn to the audience and tell an anecdote. An anecdote? I remember the first time I played here. <laughs> fireman. Fireman. Well, all you have to do really with a fireman would be master the pole. Ah, the pole's a piece up of noise. Up and down the pole, up down and the down pole, the pole. The hat, the uniform. Days, yeah. you could get away with that for days. Yeah, yeah. As long as you remember to hold the hose right when you're putting the fire out. Yeah. You know? Because there's get... procedure for that. No, I know, but you get rumbled eventually. Mm, how so? Well, because I would turn up. I'm the boss, right? I would mm. turn up. There you are. Hosing? Yeah, whole bit. And I'd say, mm. hey, what are you doing? I'm putting the fire out. And you're standing there pointing it to the van. <sighs> giving it a wash like an idiot. Oh, doomed. <laughs> rumbled. That's the last time your cat bothers my pigeons. <laughs> Okay, it's just a 
few minutes about the Americans in Glasgow, Betty. Your thoughts, memories, happy or otherwise? Oh, aye. Is that thing running, son? We running? Yes. Right. OK, Betty, it's 1943. The Americans have descended on Glasgow. How did they fit in? Oh, they fitted in very well. <laughs> See, the only experience we had of the Americans was going to the pictures and seeing Humphrey Bogart and Jimmy Cagney and that. We were fascinated with them. Big, good-looking boys, so they were. But a lot of folk weren't happy with the Yanks being here because your boys were away fighting. And there was us who took the dancing with them all the time. I mean, me and my pal Rose were never after them. Because they had money, you know, and they could buy you a drink and show you a good time. And anyway, what was I meant to be doing? I mean, my Charlie had been away for three years and I was absolutely ganting for it. Stop, stop it, um, <laughs> Betty, um, it's a tea time show, uh, you know, fond recollections. Uh, maybe not use that word. Yanks. Ganton. Oh, sorry, son, right, yeah. Right, off you go. Right, well, see, you couldn't get nylons. You, you had to draw a line up the back of your legs so they looked like nylons. But you could get nylons off the Yanks. And money. You could get money off them and all. The money for things. <laughs> Can you say that, Betty? Just keep it light, please. Um, light, happy memories. But they were happy memories. I mean, that's the thing. Even though there was a war on you, you had to make light of it. You had to see the funny side. It's all right. We just have to watch what we transmit. I'm sorry, son. So, Betty, there was a funny side to it all, wasn't there? Aye. And the funny thing was, there was my Charlie away in Tobruk fighting for king and country, and there's me and Rose round the back of the barrel lands where skirts round our necks getting pumped rotten. <laughs> How he used to call it, but we weren't caring. That's, that's, that, that's the, end, the end of the interview, thanks, Betty. The Americans were hung like ducks. That's enough, thank you very much, Betty. <laughs> Continuing our season of tartan briefs at 11.15, the heartwarming tale of Glasgow street urchins in The Gangy. It was only a spinning top, but to me, Jenny Maguire's spinning top was the magicest spinning top in all the gorbals. How I wish she'd bring it to the gangy at six, but she had to go a message for old Mrs McGuinness. Tartan briefs, boring mints, shot from queer angles. <laughs> this whole floor's pensions, this is where the packages are sent out from. All oh, right. Many people work on this floor. Twelve, all management, but... Wank. <laughs> so there he is in all his glory, of course, the King, E.P. Elvis Presley himself. This one from Elvis Presley Enterprises. If you want to get a hold of this doll, I'm afraid you're too late. Stock is completely gone. Goodbye, sir. <laughs> OK, see you in a minute. We're still on, we're still on. Do, do, do the cigarette lighter. Um, right, OK, what we have here is the Pomoni cigarette lighter. Look at that gorgeous sort of maroon-coloured enamel on there. That's a beautiful piece of work, that. Um, what can we say about this? Well, it's good for lighting cigarettes anytime, anywhere, anytime you please, in fact, with Bloody this one. Bloody marvellous, Richard. You can light fags with it. OK. Seconds. What else can we say about the Pomoni lighter? Well, let's say all the lights go out in your house, uh, which is always the trouble, and you want to try and find the fuse box. This little guy is going to get you there. What He's, an uh, arsehole you are, He's going to help you with uh, <laughs> those lighting problems. Um, a monogram, of course, if you want to put a monogram on a thing on, like this, of course you can, a little gold bar on the front there. You can put your own name or your loved one's name or indeed a friend who uh, enjoys a fag or something like that. <laughs> and, um, and, and, come on, you stuttering prick. And, of course, if, if you have a, a thread oh. hanging off your jumper or something, Two, you could burn it off one. with this and then you're, uh, then you're sorted. John is after the break. Richard. It was close, wasn't it? <laughs> we went into the break a minute and a half ago, just after the Presley doll. <laughs> you lousy bastards! <laughs> Unbelievable. Back on air in five, four, <laughs> two, one. Hi there, welcome back to QSC. You join us again, and here we have the Pomoni uh, gas lighter. What a little piece of work this is. Absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> The exhilaration produced by speeds can become very addictive. This speed demon, for example, is pushing his vehicle to its limits, reaching speeds in excess of 18 miles per hour. He may call it great fun, but to the Highland Patrol, it's reckless endangerment. A 25-pound fine and three points on his license soon brought this space cadet back to Earth. 
Well, that brings us to the end of our snooker semi-final coverage here at the Crucible Theatre. So now let's have a look back over the last couple of weeks at a few of the lighter moments that have made this tournament so entertaining. <laughs> We're not getting anything to eat. I fancy a pot noodle. Do you want one? No, uh, not for me. They things are no use to me, you know. Mm. Do they give you the pip? No, it's not that. It's just that I'm half all that junk food at the minute, you see. You want a sandwich? No, wanting anything, you see. I've got my drink here. That'll do me. So you're not hungry? No, I'm not hungry. I'm laying half the food at the minute, you see. I'm sticking with this. <laughs> you're not on a diet, are you? You don't need to lose weight, you. Oh, yeah, I do, Jack. I've got this kite here, you know. I've got to get it trimmed down. You're just on the apple juice, eh? Is that an apple juice diet? You're not meant to take just the one thing on a diet, you know. I was on a banana diet once. Left me all bound up like a geisha girl's feet. It's no apple juice, Jack. Well, what is it? Urine. <laughs> eh? Hey, urine? You're drinking number one. You're drinking urine. Aye. What in the name of hell for? I have my reasons. <laughs> well, this'll be good, eh? Reasons for drinking your own pish. <laughs> right, well, I'm sitting comfortably. Where you go. Ah, oh, it's no big mystery, Jack. It's holistic medicines, I cry it. Holistic medicine? Whose is it? It's mine. The bloody hell do you think I got it, eh? Eyes off your next door. <laughs> oh, or in a cup of milk's one thing, Jack, but... You have to guzzle that every day. Aye, every day, one tumbler. Rids the body of all the toxins, you see, you know? Oh, does it, though? That's supposed to be good for you. Well, you never know the minute, eh? Well, give us a sip. You've got to drink your own, Jack. Well, I'm not needing. Anyway, I might not like it. No sense of me running in there and filling up one of your good tumblers and then me no finishing it. Just give us a drop of that. Well, here you are. That's no bad, eh? <laughs> but do me a spot of lemonade, mind you. Ah, you're right there, Jack, you see. But that's the thing, you see. You're not allowed lemonade with you. <laughs> wank, wank, good guy, wank, good guy, wank, wank. Hmm? Oh, here we go. Richard Whiteley's introducing the guests. I love Countdown. <laughs> you two are getting beat today. Can you not just enjoy the game, Harry? The game isn't about enjoyment, Linda. It's the competition that's so engaging. Ooh, engaging. Good word, Harry. Eight letters. Right, here we go. B, M, I, X, R, E, I, N. Another N. Tough letters. Tough for some, Linda. Tough for some. Man, these letters. Linda. Please, go on and no read out the letters as they come out. We can all see them, eh? There's not any blind people in here. Not that I can see. Can you, George? Play the game, Harry. Right, many have you got? I've got eight. <laughs> many have you got? 
My words are better, it's... Good, good. Can you try and contain yourself and not blurt it out so that George can tell me how many he's got? Carry on, George. Same. Eight. All right. So what's your word? My word's Ren Minby. Well, you clam up for just... <laughs> hey, Ren Minby. What in the name of hell's Ren Minby? Get lost, you're not getting that. That's uh, what I've got. Eh? Hey? All right. Well, what does it mean then, Linda Ren Minby? Well, it means the... Uh... Hey, George. George, if you don't mind, just for a wee second. I know you know what it means. Right, Linda, what does Ren Minby mean? Well, I don't know what it means, but I've definitely heard it been used. It's a word. All right, you don't know what it means. Well, that's not exactly good enough, is it? You need to know what the word means. Uh, no, you don't, Harry, uh, as long as it's in the dictionary. Wonder what kind of world it would be if we just went wandering about, eh? Uttering words we didn't know the meaning of. A fairly foolish world, wouldn't it, Linda, eh? Where's my dinky-doo? Oh, it's in the rumbly-bumbly. Oh, by the way, what is a dinky-doo? Oh, I'm not sure, but I know it's a word. Exactly. No points. Renminbi is the currency of the old Republic of China. That's it. Chinese money. Well, that's right. Chinese money. Look at you hoovering that off of George there, eh? <laughs> Taking it as your own. Passing it off as your own information. <laughs> it is a word. Well, fine. You both have eight points. Fine. <clears throat> what was your word, Harry? Bin. <laughs> That's right, a receptacle for refuse. Here, receptacle's a great word, Dave. Oh, aye, aye. oh, shut up! <laughs> well, there's our end of show cardigans donned. Yes, and very nice they are too. It's comfy. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Listen, what's the policy on swearing in this show? Oh, I think we should adopt a policy of non-swearing. Nothing? No, we shouldn't swear. OK. If I get the urge to swear in one of these sections, I'm going to say, heck fire! Uh-huh, uh-huh. Or flipping. Oh, that's good, yeah. yeah. Or I might say to you, tarnation for it. I don't yeah. know where you're coming from oh, on I that I like one. tarnation. It's an Americanism, right? Yeah, yeah. Or you blinking monkey. Yeah, that's good, too. Yeah, you enjoyed yeah. yourself, then? Oh, it was a great time. It's been the dog's bollocks. Oh. <laughs> easy, easy, easy. <laughs> you got to be in more suggestive, more subtle. You, after everything uh, we just said about swearing? Oh, like the Mutt's Nuts or something. That's the one, yeah. Mm. The Doberman's Danglies. Yeah, the Canine's Cojones. Yeah, or the Pekingese's Plums. Yeah. <sighs> the Boxer's Bon Bons. <laughs> the Whippet's Walloper. Hey, hey, that's a bit strong. It's too much. Mm. Mm. Good night. Godspeed. I tried for this, you know. Couldn't get in it. And over packers to accommodate them all different voices, funny characters, and all that, but they, they just wouldn't wear it. I think it's the type you've got to be, you know, going to parties and all that, and wild stuff and all that, and you're just in with the in crowd. I live with my sister. You know, I'm just not the type. I would have liked it, though. I've only ever been the cops and tagger. Time now for the weather forecast for Scotland and tomorrow will be a very mild day everywhere. Apart from a couple of showers around the west coast, it will be dry across the whole country with very light winds. Temperatures will be especially mild for the time of year, reaching around 15 degrees Celsius, that's 59 Fahrenheit. Watch out though for a massive space goblin who will melt the whole country with his eggy space wind. The summary then, a mild day with chances of goblin. And that's the weather forecast.